And now, for our feature presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Call in to join the conversation at 646 646- Welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's the six man Dean Geronimo in the studio with Mark Lee. We welcome you to yet another exciting episode of our show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. You know what? It's tax day, April 15, 2019. So you got until midnight to either ask for an extension or get those taxes in. Of course, you might end up paying more than you thought you should. But, hey, the one that's in the White House right now did that to us all. Anyway, it's the six-man Dean Geronimo. And from NJ to NC, as always, I'm here with my right-hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Well, you know, these have been some very trying times here in Durham, North Carolina. I'm sure that you were studying things and checking out what was going on nationally, but we had a gas explosion yeah. that rocked the whole block around Durham, and ironically, about uh, two hours before that explosion, I had actually been at the bus stop right in front of that, so uh, as I got to work and wow. people were thinking about it and talking to that, I was thinking to myself, I was like, I was only two hours away from that explosion, so, you know, sometimes you just get to thinking about things in context when those kind of things happen in and, uh, you know, we celebrated the 150th anniversary for Durham uh, on Saturday. My cousin, uh, who's been on the show before, Verna Street, she came down and celebrated with us, did some Native American dancing. Kaiki, who's a brother from Brazil, I'm hoping to get him on the show to talk about Brazilian music and just life in Brazil. But uh, he's a real positive brother, and he did some uh, Brazilian sounds. He's got a new group. He had a one group that he had before, but now he's got a new group, Oshante. So uh, they performed the Bouncing Bulldogs, which is a, is a jump group group that's uh i think mostly all kinds of grade levels there but they are amazing they are nationally and internationally recognized jump rope team the african-american dance ensemble and um a whole bunch of other entertainment willa brigham who was actually on the show not that long ago with us she did a uh happy birthday song both the uh more traditional version as well as the CV Wonder version that she led that. So uh, it's definitely okay. a party that was held to uh, celebrate 150. But folks that were there definitely recognized what had happened right before the celebration got started. The mayor took time to honor the first responders who definitely did a stellar job in terms of uh, making sure that things were not as bad as they could have been. I mean, we were very fortunate as far as I I'm able to assess uh, right now, it's only been one fatality. I mean, any fatality is too many fatalities, but it was only one fatality and a number of people that did suffer major injuries and things of that nature. And we lost a lot of history because uh, there was a brother there that had a big time collection of Porsches. And I think that his Porsche collection took a big hit. And then there was a lot of just great traditional things that happened in that area. Before the microbrewery kind of trend took off, there was the uh, Weeping Radish microbrewery that also had a comedy club. And so a lot of people remember that as being before the downtown nightlife places really took off. That was kind of the spaces that people really uh, would honor and definitely had some rich tradition in terms of nightlife and culture and things of that nature. There were several restaurants that were there that were uh, very popular and uh, they uh, um, one may try to make it back, that being Toreros, but some of the others may not be able to make any sort of recovery. At least one we know is definitely not going to come back. But uh, definitely uh, that's always some sad things when those kind of things happen. So uh, definitely want to salute those first responders that did a great job and were definitely amazing. Um, Had a chance to meet the, I believe he was the fire chief as well as the, um, I've known the mayor, you know, we've had him on the show before. And so uh, it was Mm -hmm. just good seeing them honor folks uh, and uh, definitely recognize what had happened here in Durham. So uh, that definitely uh, shook us up uh, two days after our last podcast because, you know, we did our podcast on Monday and that incident happened on Wednesday. So a lot of things, a lot of folks are still bouncing back. There's still people that are, you know, raising money to try to help those folks that were impacted. So there have been a variety of events that are going on and it will continue to go on to try to help those that were impacted by that um, gas explosion. Like I said, it did make national news. And I had friends and acquaintances that were calling me, checking to see where I was. Some that were thinking that I used to live 
in the apartments that were actually near uh, that particular explosion. And there was a time that I did live in West Village, so they do remember correctly that I lived there. But I've gone through a number of apartments and other living places since that time. But, yeah, folks do remember that I, mm-hmm. at one time, was even closer to that in terms of my living house arrangements and things of that nature. So it was just good knowing that folks definitely care about you and are wondering whenever things like that happen. I'm sure that when there have been disasters in New York and New Jersey, you've had people reach out to you as well. So we know it's always good to know mm-hmm. that folks are caring about us and things of that nature. I don't know if Tony's going to bring this up later on, but, you know, speaking of sad news, I must give a shout out in our, and uh, definitely um, mourn the loss along with my good friend, um, Archie. Archie Logan it is a part of a band called Who's Bad, which is a Michael Jackson salute band. They are nationally recognized, actually internationally recognized, and he actually lost a son, a young son. I believe the son wow. was only like 12 or 13 years old. So that just recently oh, happened. Man. I'd actually been asking Archie to come on the show to talk about his music career, and I know that he will come on at some point because I've known Archie for a long time, and he's definitely a great supporter of the music scene and just musicians around the area, and he's got some things that he would like to do visionary-wise in the music community. So I was just really sad mm-hmm. when I saw that. My friend Sharon had posted that on uh, Facebook that uh, he had lost um, one of his. And to, to lose somebody so young, you know, it's always a shame when we lose people, but when you lose them so young in life, that just makes the tragedy even worse. It does. And, and our prayers go out to all of those who have lost loved ones, those who have endured hardships as you just stated with the uh you know the natural disaster that took place down there and anywhere in our listening audience which includes it's worldwide so we at straight talk with dana mark do send um our prayers to you and we pray that your situations improve each and every day yeah, definitely. I mean, and those worldwide tragedies are happening on a regular basis. I was just hearing earlier today that, and I don't know, I haven't studied to find out what was causing it, but apparently the Notre Dame Cathedral, which is a major cathedral, is actually there was some fire that was going on there earlier today. So that was a tragedy that was going on. I don't know what kind of people were impacted or what was going on there, but, you know, that's in um, – France, and that is definitely a nationally recognized part of their heritage, and definitely something was going on there. But on a more positive note, because you know we're always talking about that person up there that's occupying those offices in D.C., and we really don't want him to be occupying those offices. We'd rather him get on no. out of here. And I, and I just saw today that uh, they, he will have a rival, not just from the Democrats, because we know there are several Democrats that are running against him. But former Massachusetts Governor Bill Whale announced today that he is officially running for president, becoming the first Republican to mount a primary challenge against uh, that person that's currently in the office. He says, it is time for patriotic men and women across our great nation to stand and plant a flag, Whale said in a statement. There is no greater cause on earth than preserve what truly makes America great. I am ready to lead that fight. And so he was the 2016 Libertarian vice presidential candidate, and he talked to somebody from ABC um, and said that he was considering a primary challenge at that time because he didn't think that we had six more years of the antics, frankly, for one of a better word that we've seen the last two years. I think that would be bad for the country and I don't care who knows it. So he's definitely letting folks know that he is not uh, one of those people that's just going to put up with the uh, craziness. He wants to come out there and stand up against this person. So it's good to know that there are even people within his own party that recognize that it is, um, some major stuff going on. And um, I just saw down here, just changing the topic real correctly. I did just look down here. It says flames caused colossal damage to the Notre Dame Cathedral. They did say that they wow. will rebuild. So apparently whatever damage was going on today, it was uh, not just a minor flame, but it was a massive thing that was going on. So, uh, you know, that's definitely these kind of tragedies that are going on around the world. are just amazing what's going on. So, uh, Definitely, uh, we'd have to look at that and see what's going on. It says a fire has engulfed the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, one of the city's most iconic sites. The fire began at 6.50 p.m. their time, and it would continue to burn hours later. So it said that the main structure has been saved of the cathedral, and two iconic main towers are intact and have been saved as well. So we're glad to know that things have been saved and that uh, folks are... uh, definitely working on trying to rescue as much as possible, but it does look like that uh, iconic figure um, in terms of a uh, 
something that people that have traveled to Paris, I have not made it to Paris yet. That's on my bucket list, but uh, I've not made it there. But those that have made it and have probably looked at that, I'm sure that they have great memories of that location and are probably wondering what it'll look like now that this has happened. So it just looks like a lot of things are happening around the world. It is, and um, we just got that doorbell, so we're going to find out who is behind that door. But before we do that, we're going to take a commercial. But before we do that, I want to wish tomorrow my mentor, my role model, my first best friend, my father, Sergeant First Class John W. Pierce Jr., I wish you a happy 81st birthday, sir. So we're going to get into the commercial, and we're going to bring them in. It's Straight Talk with Dana Mark, y'all. The old renaissance is the new renaissance, standing on tradition while embracing the spirit of distinction. This is the Harlem Brewing Company, uniquely crafted beer brewed to deliver a taste, a sound, and a feeling that can only be described in one way, Harlem style. So come and take a trip on the A-Train with our Harlem Sugar Hill Golden Ale and our Harlem Renaissance Whitney, the neighborhood original. And 646 668 is the number if you want to call in. Um, right now, thank you, Mr. Springs, for calling in. You are on with Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Hey, good uh, evening, Mark. How you doing, Tony? I'm so glad that you were able to call in. Tony, I've known you for a number of years, and I've known that you were involved in a lot of different things. Of course, I know you as a musician, because uh, that's primarily what kind of circles I would see you traveling around. But as I've learned <laughs> over the more recent times, you've also done a lot of work in the reentry work. And you had sent me an email letting me know that uh, this week, uh, or the week of April 24th, is National Reentry Week, which was designated by President Obama. So I, I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about how you got involved in this, because, like I said, I know you more as a musician because you're with one of the in my mind, one of the top bands around this area uh, in terms of uh, getting out there and being nationally known and even having performed for people like President Obama. So I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how this part of your life came around and how you got involved in this cause. Well, basically how the, this part of my life kind of evolved. As um, being a musician, it I got a lot of joy out of it. I still, I still sing with the band part-time. But what ended up happening is that I've heard a lot of people, and myself included, over time talk about the injustices and how things are going on with uh, the system itself. And as a voice kind of yelling out in the dark. And I always was one to think that to affect change, true change, you have to kind of put yourself in the midst of it. That's the only way it can really happen. Um, it was something that I had actually thought about for years. I had a friend of mine named Larry Williams, who was a correctional officer, and I was talking about it years ago, thinking about making a change. In the band, I was lucky enough to be in a band of brothers, which I considered Archie Logan. is truly a brother of mine. I'm sorry to hear about his son. I remember when he was born. Um, but I told them that I was ready to do something different. They supported me wholeheartedly. And I got into um, becoming a correctional officer. And as I started working in corrections, the state of North Carolina has made the point to look at reentry and look at the fact that we have a lot of people, we have a lot of incarcerated men and women that are one day going to come back home. They're not going to stay locked up forever. They're not going to stay incarcerated forever. And what can we do to make that transition successful? I was fortunate that my facility, Orange Correctional, uh, saw fit to allow me to become part of that mission. Our facility itself, along with uh, six other ones, were designated as reentry facilities. And they put me in a position where I could actually be in the midst of people who were part of making the decisions and trying to figure out what's the best solution and to uh, make partnerships with the local community, which the Chapel Hill, our catchment area, each facility is designated a particular group of counties in which we try to assist, which for us is Orange County, Durham County, Caswell County, Randolph, uh, Person County, and uh, Alamance and um, Grand County. So most of our population will be coming to from those areas, 
and they're usually uh, designated where we're looking at trying to affect change within them 